So first, our first speaker today is Professor Michael Fuhrer. Michael began his physics education at the University of Texas before moving to the University of California to complete his PhD on electronic and thermal transport in high technetium and fullerene superconductors in 1998. In 2000, he joined the faculty at the University of Maryland, where he became the director of the Center for Nanophysics and Advanced Materials. Michael joined us at Monash on an ARC Laureate Fellowship in 2013, studying atomically thin two-dimensional materials like graphene. Since arriving in Australia, Michael has discovered that he is a birder. I remember shortly after his arrival being quite impressed by his knowledge of all the native birds on campus, of which I was completely unaware. But if there's one thing that Michael likes to talk about even more than birds or physics, it's wine, and I believe he's quite an expert. Please welcome Michael. Yeah. Uh, thanks very much. Um, so, uh, yes, yeah, so the title here, uh, Between the Sheets, refers to um, uh, this uh, structure here, which is uh, the atomic structure of, of graphite. So graphite comes in sheets of carbon that are strongly bonded. Uh, and these days, uh, physicists can study just one of these sheets, uh, which we call graphene, and that's the material I'm going to try to tell you about today. Um, okay, so, uh, so uh, you might be familiar with gra graphite from, uh, from a, you know, your pencil, which has uh, the lead that writes uh, on the paper, uh, is made out of graphite, and when you write on a piece of paper, uh, the fact that these sheets are very weakly bonded together allows uh, uh, sheets, uh, one or a few or many sheets, to slide off uh, of the, the pencil lead onto the paper, leaving behind the, the black mark uh, from the pencil. Uh, so this is what we call exfoliation. Uh, so we can use much more sophisticated tools uh, to do this, uh, like scotch tape, and uh, we can get some nice crystals of graphite that are a little bit better quality than the lead that's in your pencil. Uh, and in fact, if we take the scotch tape and we, uh, we peel these crystals apart many times and then take the debris that's left and smear it on a flat surface of silicon dioxide on, on silicon and, and put it under an optical microscope, we can see images like this uh, and, and in fact identify uh, areas that are just uh, one layer of carbon thick. This is a single layer of graphene. Uh, this is the bare silicon dioxide, this is bilayer, etc. So, so we can actually find these single layers and then we can use the tools that are used in the semiconductor industry to make micro devices, uh, to make uh, little graphene devices uh, where we have metal electrodes uh, contacting our graphene so we can, we can run currents through it and do electrical experiments on it. And experiments on devices like this uh, resulted uh, in the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2010 uh, for Andre Geim and Kostya Novoselov who developed this technique of using scotch tape uh, to make graphene. Uh, I think if this was the only way to make graphene, there wouldn't be quite so much excitement, but since this, uh, this scotch tape discovery, uh, 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 a number of uh, scientists have, have found other ways to make graphene. Notably, you can grow graphene on copper, and so this is a piece of copper foil rolled up in, in a furnace, and one can grow a, a piece of uh, graphene that's just one atom thick uh, that's almost a meter across the diagonal here. Uh, so, so we can make lots of graphene. Uh, this is useful. It's, it's almost 100%, uh, it's 98% transparent and, and can be used as a, as a conducting electrode for photovoltaics or touch screens. And so there's lots of uh, things we can do with this. Um, okay, so maybe the basic question we can ask is, is whether graphene conducts electricity or not, and the answer actually turns out to be quite interesting. Uh, so uh, graphene con does conduct electricity, but it turns out it conducts only along certain directions. So there are these zigzag chains of atoms in the, in the graphene, uh, and el graphene is electrically conducting along those directions. Uh, and if we look at uh, uh, these directions where we have atoms in, in these dimer pairs, it turns out graphene doesn't carry current along those directions. It's, it's insulating or semiconducting. Um, so this is, a, in some sense, a hidden property uh, of graphene, uh, that it's a conductor along some directions and an, an insulator in others. Uh, and the reason I say it's hidden is that if we, if we were to do the thought experiment of taking a, a voltmeter or a, a multimeter and hooking it up uh, with little tiny alligator clips to this, this graphene, uh, and measured its resistance, we'd find that it, it conducts. And that's because there are always some zigzag paths, in fact, infinitely many, that connect uh, these, these two points on the graphene sheet. So it does, it does conduct current in any direction that, that we like. Uh, so this is, in some sense, a hidden property that we have this. There are some directions where the, the current is not flowing. 
Um, so the way that physicists like to think about a material is in terms of uh, what we call band structure. So this takes a little bit of explaining. Uh, this is a picture where I've plotted the energy uh, of, of the, that the electrons can have as a function of their momentum in, in two directions. We have x and x and y. Well, they should be reversed, maybe x and y momentum. Uh, and so those are the directions that the electrons are traveling within the plane of, of the graphene. Um, and uh, th there are some, so th this, is, this is actually the, the, the expected uh, structure, band structure for graphene. It follows a fairly simple equation, which you can ignore. Um, but the, the important thing is to notice some, some special features in this structure. And that one is that uh, there are down here, uh, this turns out to be the energy at which we fill electrons up. The highest energy electrons in neutral graphene will be at these points, and these six points correspond to six directions, and those six directions are along these zigzag chains, and they're the directions that current can flow in graphene. Uh, and, and as I mentioned, there, there really are these sort of six directions, and here at these points, graphene is what we would call metallic. It conducts electricity. But for other directions, there's what we call a band gap, uh, this energy gap is the characteristic of a semiconductor, and electrons can't conduct there unless they're given extra energy to promote uh, electrons down here and to, to unfilled states up here. And so in those directions, graphene is effectively not conducting. Um, so the, this, these points here where, where graphene conducts are actually turn out to be quite special. Uh, other materials don't have points that look quite like this. They have this funny conical structure. We have this cone here touching a, an upside down cone uh, here. And this conical relationship between energy and momentum is, is unique to graphene. Graphene has this, but other materials don't. <clears throat> and that, that's something that's really qualitatively different. So, so normally, uh, so what I'm plotting here again is, is, is energy as a function of momentum. Um, if you remember E equals one half mb squared or kinetic energy is one half mb squared from your physics classes, you can re-express that as p squared where p is momentum over twice the mass. And so energy should be quadratic in momentum. So energy should be a parabola. But in graphene, it's linear. Uh, so graphene has an energy that's just a velocity times momentum. Energy is proportional to momentum. These, these blue lines are straight lines. Uh, and so that's very different, and it looks not like massive particles, but rather like particles of light, which have energy equal to the speed of light times their momentum. Here, this velocity is much slower than the speed of light, but still the electrons in graphene move at constant velocity, and they act like they have no mass. So they act like particles of light. So that's something that's unusual. Um, and also, there's this funny singularity here, that there's a point uh, at the end of the cone. Uh, this singularity leads to some unexpected new physics. Uh, it's a bit difficult to describe that without a lot more quantum mechanics. So there are uh, things like an, there's an anomalous quantum Hall effect in graphene. There's something called weak anti-localization instead of weak localization. And maybe the last one is something that at least we can, we can visualize. So graphene turns out to be very diamagnetic. Uh, it's repelled by magnetic fields. This is actually a property that actually carries over into graphite. So if we return back to our piece of graphite, this is the same stuff that's in your pencil lead. Uh, and I brought this demonstration in, but it's very hard to, to see uh, back in the, in the lecture hall. Uh, so this is actually a collection of magnets. And if I put the graphite on top of the magnet, um, it's actually levitating. So this is a video I took. Uh, of this, and so it's actually levitating on top of the magnet. If I shake it around, you can see that it's uh, it's kind of floating in midair. Maybe you can see that. Um, I have another video viewed from the side. Here you can't quite see what the piece of graph graphite looks like, but you can certainly see that it's floating. If I press on it, it it uh, I can depress it, but then it kind of pops back up. Uh, I could slide a card underneath. There's no, no strings attached. <laughs> so, yeah. So that's a kind of an interesting property that, that actually comes from this funny singularity uh, in, the, in the graphene. Um, there's another property, uh, uh, there's another way that we can reveal this hidden property of graphene, and that's to roll it up into a tube. So there are various ways that we can take this sheet and roll it into a tube. Some of these have this zigzag chain of atoms running along their length, and some don't. 
Um, and that actually reveals this, this property. So it turns out that this nanotube with this zigzag chain running along its length, uh, that's the direction that graphene, uh, the metallic direction in graphene. In fact, this nanotube will be metallic and it's a good conductor. Uh, and this nanotube with this dimers along its length will be semiconducting. Uh, and this actually could be used to make transistors. And so, so this rolling graphene into a tube reveals this hidden property of the graphene. Um, in quantum mechanics, what that means is that we, we take this band structure and one of the directions of the momenta becomes quantized around the, the nanotube. And that just takes these cones that we talked about and it slices them. And so some of these slices of the cones, uh, these conic sections will be straight lines if they go through the point of the cone and those are, are metals. And some of the, the slices, if we have a different structure for our nanotube, will miss that point and we'll have a semiconductor. Uh, and this has an energy gap. So that's a way to reveal that property. Okay, so that's, that's really all I wanted to try to tell you to give you a little flavor of, of graphene and why the electronic behavior is special, why what electrons do in graphene is a little different. Um, there are other atomically thin materials that one can study. There are two-dimensional semiconductors. There are materials that we call topological insulators in which uh, the bulk is insulating, but they're conducting metallic electrons that live just on an atomically thin layer on the surface. Uh, so there, and, and all of these things are being studied uh, here at Monash uh, in my laboratory, and there are other people studying them. Um, and thanks for your attention.